So welcome in the afternoon after, I would say as a German, after coffee break, as a Spanish, I would say after lunch. So uh, yeah, welcome back. Thanks to all of you who are still here. I think uh, Friday afternoon, we really appreciate that. We also take it a bit that you're still interested in what is happening here. Hello. No. I didn't check, but you may check. Okay, so in this panel that we are running now, we want to look a bit into the future also. We, I, we want to see a bit where Europe can help. Are we doing the right thing? Thanks, Sylvia. Yes, should, should, we, should Europe do more and I would like to start this discussion and I would introduce everybody on the, on the way when we, when we have the first statement. I would like to start this with a discussion a bit on financing. Yeah, and and I, we have announced that my speakers here know that we want to touch that a little bit. So in a, in a way my, my question is, how do these fi hubs finance? Yeah, how, where do we get the money from? Where what kind of mix financing do we have? And in order for that, to, to stimulate that a bit, I want to just give you a very short introduction so you have, the, you have the ideas in hand. Now, the reason why I discuss it, we are at the moment planning Framework Program 9, the next multi-annual financial framework. We have some ideas. I will not tell you our ideas at this point in time but I may check one or the other idea with you when we, when we have this discussion. Yeah? So, when we, put this, when we put this initiative on the table, digitizing European industry, we were saying we bring five billion and we get a leveraging effect, a very popular word in the commission nowadays, of a factor of 10. That would mean we get up to 50, 55 billion of investment. A lot of people were laughing at us and were saying we were exaggerating. When I now count and see what member states invest in these 15 and getting more and more initiatives, and the first analysis I've seen on what is invested in member states, I, I don't think that was exaggerating. Yeah? One has to just be a bit, uh, see how we, how we count that. We cannot count it in the very narrow sense. No, not every euro in a project will get nine euros from others in that project. But in a way it works, I'll give you an example. In the Excel joint undertaking, I've recently launched with the, with the Saxonian Prime Minister a project of 100 million euros. And there is, and I said you did a very smart deal because he put one euro from Saxonian subsidies. He got one euro from Germany, they got two euros from the European Union, and four euros from industry. So one euro of Saxonian investment meant eight euro of investment in Saxonia. So that was a good deal for them. And what we have in mind here is, in order for Europe to succeed in digital transformation, we can put some money on the table, we can pool it together, but we have to have in mind, it cannot be all paid by the commission. That's why this morning I put this slide here where I basically said, Member states have the role of doing the infrastructure funding, Grundfinanzierung, the financing at the ground, and we can fund what is the networking, we can fund what is cross-border. And that leads me to this kind of strange picture. You will see that the, 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 the stone on the left is less money than the one on the right. We need the member state, the region's member state and the industrial funding to get it right. So we need to bring together the sources of financing to mobilize a critical mass of investment. Now, if I look at this table, it's very roughly done for this panel. I look at this table, I'm basically saying, where do we have funding? And I want to identify with you what is missing later. And, and, but, but I will let my colleagues here from the panel first say how they finance, so we may get some inspiration on that. So at the moment, on innovative digital technologies, we have the research programs and innovation programs and innovation programs in member states pay. Yeah? But that's for highly innovative things. You know that the Horizon 2020 has the excellence paradigm. We cannot fund anything that's not excellent. So the 
third, fourth, fifth repetition of an experiment we cannot fund because for a research project it's not innovative. And the member states have the same restrictions. So there we get, go on the innovative digital technologies. Also when you have done your first steps towards digital transformation, when an SME, a startup needs money, venture capital, um, whatever, loans, equity, research programs have nothing. So question is what do we do then? So when, and I call that here mainstream digital technologies which would not qualify for a research program. There in the member states we have the financial instruments of the member states, lo loans, local innovation, uh, vouchers and all kinds of things, maybe Kreditanstalt für Wiederaufbau, BPE in France, we have these banks who, who offer something locally. On European level, we have the European level financial instruments like the European, the, the Juncker package as you know, which is managed by the EIB and we have the EIF, we have European level innovation vouchers, but when it comes to collaboration between digital innovation hubs, it's, it's a bit when, when an SME comes to one hub and then one hub needs something from another hub, we need a business model probably for that, otherwise it will not happen at large if the commission doesn't fund through innovation funding. So my question is what do we see here, what is missing? Do we have the right instruments? Does, for example, the European Commission funding in the Juncker package with EIB, does it work? Is it just for the large one? Does it work for the SMEs? These kind of questions. I know we will not find a solution today, but you will bring us some, probably some inspiration for our thoughts for the future. And in that sense, I would like to start, each, ask each of you to give me a short, up, uh, the ones who are directly involved in member states programs to give me a short message on how you see the fi what you do and what your financing situation is. So Fernando Valdes from the Ministry of Economics here in Madrid, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Uh, well, if uh, we have to focus on, on financing, uh, we, in, uh, from a public point of view, I, I, have, to, I have to talk here uh, from what is the role of a national uh, public administration such as, such as ours such as the Ministry of Economic, Industry and Competitiveness. We have been deploying, as uh, my Director General has stated this morning in the opening session, we've been uh, deploying for the last two years the financial scheme of our Industria Conectada 4.0. That goes over 100 uh, million euros uh, annually on loans uh, to invest on projects regarding digitization uh, of the industry, plus more or less uh, 4 million euros each year regarding other projects uh, integrated in our, in our strategy. So after we heard your words, Max, Max uh, I think we need, first of all, and uh, this is one thing we are, uh, uh, Mario, my, my director general, uh, presented this morning, and we are uh, planning to do it this year, is change this or, or at least adapt this financial scheme uh, in order to uh, represent the importance of digital innovation hubs. So how can we uh, help, uh, especially how can we make um, DH, uh, DIH sustainable? Um, from this uh, uh, starting point that we are right now here in Spain, we believe that a key um, issue regarding uh, digital innovation hubs right now for us is sustainability. Because there are many initiatives um, uh, that are appearing in this, uh, in this new uh, program and we, uh, we have to make it uh, we have to make sure that th those uh, digital innovation hubs are sustainable mm -hmm. and also we want to uh, strengthen the relation cross-region because you have said that the EU is going to concentrate in uh, cross-country. So one of the things we want to stress also is uh, finance uh, initiative cross-regional between our regions. I think that is a, that that are very good points. I would like to pick up the sustainability issue, as our constituency from the research programs knows. We fund a project for three years, then a successor project comes in in one of the cores, and it may fail. 
So we, with a research and innovation program, cannot guarantee sustainability. Sustainability has to, guarantee, has to be guaranteed through being rooted in the national and regional ecosystem. So I completely agree with what you said, and that's why the cross-regional funding is also important. So thank you very much, Fernando. Didier van den Abele for the French side. You're from the Ministry of Higher Education and Research in France. What's your view on it? Uh, if you look only to the um, right uh, upper slide, part of the slide, uh, you will see that uh, we have to deal with a complex situation because we have to speak about research, SG enterprise, and uh, now the Alliance and Industry Future. And a bit louder. Uh, right. And uh, uh, to find an agreement between all the guys uh, and touching all the actors uh, is not easy. I remember the question of the German, of, uh, the German colleague this morning. We have 30,000 actors in SME in, in France. How can we serve uh, all the guys, uh, these guys, uh, in the w right way? So what we are developing, uh, we have a key point, a key element regarding uh, this uh, strategy is to make a survey, one more, coordinated with Moritz, uh, uh, about the competencies we have in terms of competence center and, and infrastructure, just to expose them at the right level, because they are <coughs> more or less not known at European level, because sometimes they, they don't get the right win-win situation to go to Europe. It's also important. They are at the state of the art, and they say, no, no need for me to, to compete or to share my knowledge with the other actors. So we have to establish uh, with them, it's for all, uh, role, uh, a win-win situation that what you will get to go to uh, Europe in terms of business and so on. So it's, it's a long way. It's not only a question of million allocated by a region or something like that. So this is what we are developing in terms of common understanding of where we are. And we work mainly through regions. So the survey we have launched, we have realized, you have a map today of the competence center and, and uh, hubs. It's uh, asking to the regions, uh, which infrastructure do you have in regions which are related to uh, innovation hub about IC ICT and an MBP and which are part of the S3 uh, strategy and uh, which of this one do you, uh, do you support in fact because uh, most of the case is uh, the regions uh, fund uh, the infrastructures. So this is uh, the, the process we apply and after we have uh, through Alliance of Industry Future uh, another point of view, which is also related to SMEs, which is related to standardization, it's uh, another point of view. And DGE, DG Enterprise, is also financing high-level uh, infrastructure like uh, TerraLab or, or CE, for example. So we have to deal with this complex situation of different uh, point of view and actors, but we want to expose these actors at European level. I, th I think you rightly point at this very complex situation. I mean, we, we are aware that we are in that complex situation. And you mentioned, for example, EFRI. Some regions have regional funds, some other regions have no regional funds. I don't think in, in total, in the, at, at the end, we will harmonize it all. I mean, we know the framework program is a top-down program. You have a consortium to come to the commission to present. When you want local, when you want regional funding, you have to go through the region and look that there is a right hook in the operational plan and you get it, you get it funded. We are aware of that. However, we have always got opportunities when we derive new multi-annual financial frameworks, new framework programs, that we can harmonize a bit more. And we are very well working with the regional funds. Yeah, we work with the uh, investment fund. And it's an opportunity now that we have done this first time, FP9 and those funds. Now is an opportunity to, to look at what do we need in addition, where do we need to work better together. So in the, in the next month, we will, we will probably start <coughs> discussing that from all fronts. That means my colleagues in DG Grow will are discussing it, my colleagues in DG Research and, and Innovation are discussing it, and then we see how, it, how we convert, uh, converge again. But that, I think, was a good point that you, that you mentioned this complexity, and you have the same complexity normally in your member states in terms of funding, not only on European level. So Martin Rukowski from DFKE, Deutsche Forschungsgesellschaft für Künstliche Intelligenz. Right. Künstliche Intelligenz, artificial intelligence. Yeah, maybe your, your view on that. Yeah, uh, our view. So um, my research area is um, included in a multitude of different projects and, and funding schemes. I think very well known in Germany is the platform industry 4.0, uh, uh, which is more an umbrella, which is not really a funding of projects, but it's a, it's a collection and an uh, exchange of, of uh, topics and ideas. 
uh, a very big funding in initiative is this Mittelstand uh, 4.0 in Germany, uh, digital production and work processes, uh, which has a very regional approach, although it's a, a federal uh, funding scheme. Um, the, the aims are to raise the awareness among SMEs and to provide key information and knowledge. So uh, Germany realized that it's very uh, necessary to go into the regions, but not, not all regions are strong enough to do it on their own. So there's a federal approach really to go into the regions. We started with 11 centers uh, last year. Uh, by today we have 13 centers running uh, and up to 22 centers are planned all over Germany. So you see the map here. Uh, that means uh, that the larger uh, uh, states in Germany will have two centers uh, because uh, everybody shall be reached within uh, yeah, one day of driving there and back. Um, and perhaps you go to the next slide uh, because I have the structure. No, okay, then I'll explain how it it's working. So, um, um, the, the, these funding of the Mittelstand 4.0 is, is kind of a project uh, that is funded uh, to um, regular associations close to universities. And we have in, in Kaiserslautern, the DFKI, we have the Smart Factory, which is an informal association. Um, we have regular research projects, uh, many EU-funded projects, and we are working together with uh, regional organizations connecting us really to uh, local SMEs, that means the Handelskammer, EHK, uh, and so. And we, we really try to, uh, to bring together in our hub uh, the multitude of possible uh, ways of funding. Um, and um, this, this Mittelstand 4.0, since it's, it's a German approach, also uh, supports the networking between the, the regional centers. Yeah, so it's, it's really bringing together a multitude of, of possible approaches within local hubs uh, where we have innovation, where we have transfer and really kind of uh, yeah, consulting training to SMEs in, in, in one place. So is it, is it correct to say that looks like a bit, in Germany, in those hubs, you get a bit of support from the ministry, but for your experiments that you do, I call them experiments, with, with your clients, you have a var variety of models, of funding models that may work depending on the, on the kind of experiment, the kind of goals that you have. Yeah, we, we have uh, five uh, experiments or projects uh, funded wh where we uh, have looked for uh, SMEs who want to do projects with, together with us. So they, do, they are doing projects and we are uh, accompanying them through the projects more or less. But we also can use the same facility for different projects. So the Smart Factory is association with bigger companies and we can transfer knowledge from big companies also to SMEs. So, so you, you, there's one concept here that, that we, we should mention. So you have the bigger companies mit on board because they are driving often the small companies. Um, and and they, would, they would probably get less investment because they have an interest in it? Well, well it's, it's a lucky situation in Kaiserslautern we have because we have several uh, organizations at, at one place. Yeah. And uh, the Smart Factory where uh, Industry 4.0 started uh, 12 years ago, uh, of course, has this association with a lot of bigger companies. And we, we, we use that, of course, um, for the smaller companies and have uh, a win-win situation. Okay. So thank you very much for the German situation. So Sam Helmer from TNO, what's the situation in smart industry in the Netherlands? It's, there is some central funding available, but maybe you, ca you can explain a bit more. Yeah, thanks, Max. Um, well, the point I want to make, of course, uh, we do similar things to, to what in other, uh, what's happening in other countries. I will not talk too long about that. Uh, a lot of the activities we have are uh, uh, geared towards um, awareness. Um, <coughs> but my point would be in terms of financing instruments is that um, we do a lot of these, these things, right? We, we have a Dutch word for a digital innovation hub, which is called a field lab in our jargon. Um, and we do a lot of these field labs because we want to achieve something that's, uh, in my opinion, the, the, the quintessence of fin the, the, the problem in financing. So when I talk to manufacturing companies and I ask them, why do you want a public-private partnership on manufacturing? Why do you want a public-private partnership on ICT for manufacturing SMEs? They always tell me, Sam, uh, the problem is not that we don't know what to do. Of course, every day we're busy trying to make ourselves more competitive, trying to make our production lines more competitive. But what is difficult and why we need some help from government and from knowledge institutions is that in the old times we would have a factory that would produce and along the way you would, um, uh, we 
make that line more productive and you would earn money while you were doing it. Nowadays, we are forced because of international competition to make those production development efforts in a time where we're not sending bills yet. So we are forced to think about how we will uh, make our production lines more competitive in a, in a point in time where we don't earn any money yet. And that means that they would like help in two uh, respects. They can't go to a bank to get uh, funding for production development <coughs> efforts because there's no, <coughs> I don't know the word in English, in, in, in Dutch it's omopant. Um, but anyway, you can't get financing from a bank for just thinking about new production lines. Um, so they need more angel investment type money to, uh, to step into these projects. And the reason that we uh, create field labs or digital innovation hubs is that we want to prove to financiers that the risk of financing in production development is actually very much lower than they would assume. For, so for me, the whole reason that what we are doing in terms of digital innovation hubs is about getting financing to <coughs> step into uh, financing uh, manufacturing. Okay, so, so the work you do is stimulating further financing as well by banks, by other funds, by investment funds. Yes, but mind you, so I'm working at TNO, we are a very technology-oriented techno technology yeah, uh, yeah. organization. This is, not, uh, this is not our usual business, so we are having to learn to work with business development organizations and financing organizations. And one of the points that I would like to make is in the next years of uh, European financing, I would like some money for those type of activities. So technology organizations getting to know business development organizations and the other way around. Yeah, but, but I, think, I think TNO is in a similar situation as many other of the digital innovation hubs we have here. Many of you are competent centers on the technology, on the applications, and you are, many of you, including myself, are not experts on financing on banking and, and, and these issues. So that's also why I wanted to have this discussion to get you a bit up to speed on this thinking because I think if we want to be successful in future with rolling out broadly, we have to think all in this direction and if we ha don't have the knowledge ourselves, we have to have get the right people engaged to get that knowledge. Luigi, <coughs> Italy. It is not Italy, but anyway, it moves nicely. No, 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 it's, it's not my, my slide, so... Uh. The or I decide the order. <laughs> I decide the order, <laughs> Sylvia. Can you, can you go one step further than to have Italy first? All right. Yes. That's Thank you. It looks more Italian. <laughs> <laughs> next, 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 then. Don't worry, you don't need to ask me two All right. So, Italy. Uh, yes, well, uh, in here you see, you see the, the national plan. Uh, the, by the way, the good news that we had uh, the day before yesterday by uh, a meeting with uh, several ministers is that there will be also uh, more or less the same support the next year. So for, for next year. Um, here when it was presented, it was presented from 2017 to 2020. So that's, uh, that's our hope that we'll continue over time because uh, the results, uh, as far as the industry is concerned, are, are quite, uh, are quite uh, good. Uh, for instance, order for, for machineries and technological assets uh, gone up to 11%. Um, investments in, in, in research and development has gone up. Um, there are other uh, monies coming for uh, specific uh, research programs, national level, one billion for, uh, uh, for uh, a project with, for on 12 industrial clusters. Um, on the right hand side, you see uh, logos of uh, the Digital Innovation Hub network of Confindustria. Confindustria is the Confederation of Italian Industry. And what we have uh, built, uh, what we are building the hub network is on the regional uh, representation that we have. Uh, you must know that we have uh, uh, almost uh, an office in every province, but uh, we have been restructuring in the last couple of years, so now they are becoming regional uh, uh, structures. Um, so there are about 20 hubs that are uh, planned. Some are already operational. Some will be operational uh, quite soon. The problem is that there, is no there are no resources for the hubs. Some of the regions are thinking about it, but you know that the, the process of um, um, bureaucracy and politics is not very, very quick and fast. 
So the market region, for, for instance, has come out with a very nice uh, law that will uh, We'll start to give some fruits in the next couple of months. Other regions are thinking about it, but so there is a lack of resources. Uh, and the problem is that the activity of the hubs, uh, particularly for SMEs that you know are the bulk of the Italian industry, is so our big challenge. Because if you don't manage to have the SMEs involved, then uh, our strategy will, will, will fail. We don't have enough big companies to, uh, to increase our GDP only with big companies. So we need to succeed this challenge with small enterprises and the effort and the funding for the time being comes from the associations. There is no money coming from any other sources. There is a program of, uh, in, in some hubs, a program for enrollment of companies that will pay a different level depending on the size, a certain fee to get access to the services. Uh, definitely we will look at other sources of funding, but for instance, what I've seen with the I4MS uh, um, exercise of yesterday is a lot of hubs, I4MS, are getting money from Horizon 2020. But as Max said, that's something that cannot be sustainable over the, the medium long time because that's for ex ex excellence. It's not for running hubs to provide services for SMEs. So uh, what I think is that perhaps, particularly for the cooperation at European level, that I think that is fundamental for the uh, rapid growth of knowledge and on competence of the hubs, uh, perhaps in the next uh, future we should find some uh, sources to help this cooperation between the different uh, regions of, of Europe. Okay, so, but that, that gives a clear message to us. There is also bottom-up funding from regions and from member states needed. There is the complementary European funding, but there is little bit, little too, the complement on the other side is not as strong as it needs to be. We need some push needs from, to be. From, from also political push from the Commission to make it clear that that's a, a strong priority for, for Europe and for the member states. Okay, thank you, Luigi. Now, I'm happy to have here first time Jan Stanilko from, from the Polish Ministry of Economic Development. And what I heard from discussions today, you, you have moved in, in Poland in terms of digital innovation. Maybe you give us a short update on where you are and then maybe focus a bit on financing as well. Jan. Uh, we are in the midst of the process of establishing the national platform in the form of the state-sponsored foundation. Uh, it is the first institution uh, which is the manifestation of the new Polish industrial strategy of the entrepreneurial state. It's not enough to have a tax break because if there is a fear of knowledge transfer, fear of or, or the asymmetry of I information between the enterprises and the technology sector, the transfer will come. So uh, we uh, have structurally completely different environments than the perhaps all the countries mentioned here. Um, first of all, Polish manufacturing sector grows uh, output grows 10% a year, so it's not a problem. Um, then we have once a seven years we've got additional we have got additional budget from the European Union, and the problem is how to spend it, because this 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 money I dedicated for the mostly for the infrastructure and for the innovation for the infrastructure okay we're doing this with additional environmental protection laws which are not which were not available in the Western Europe in the 70s but we we've, we've managed this. And the problem is how to absorb in a very short time, in seven years, several billions of euro in the economy which is not innovative. Yeah, it's a productive, absorbing technology, buying technology, um, economy, which has, as companies, has no R&D functions and so on and so on. So we've done the, first of all, we've done the research. I'm <laughs> I come from the research sector, so I want managing. So we've done the research from the with, with the Siemens and discovered the main blockade is uh, not the money. The enterprises are sitting on their money. We have plenty of money. The, 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 the problem is the, the learning attitude. They don't want to learn. They're not open to uh, absorb new things. So the one uh, crucial factor for us was create an entrepreneurial institution which is sponsored by the government but open for the funding uh, from any kind of the sources, <coughs> which is uh, also available to spend uh, cascading funds from the regional funds or the government funds uh, or, uh, or the European funds. Uh, it's a tool for the entrepreneurial action. 
it took us a lot of time in the government to discuss whether it is, it is a corruptive institution or something like that, that we must like have to protect it formally that it will, will work. So in the mem uh, uh, and the financing for the, because it's a platform as a business model, so the more people or the resources you will get there, the more available uh, they will be and the more productive they will be and the more beneficial they will be. So that's why uh, it's quite, we hope, it will be quite easy to persuade entrepreneurs, smaller one or medium one, to pay a fee, <coughs> like a small one, like a few thousand of euro a year, and increase it every year. Because the more will happen in this network, the more it will be valuable. It is a model and it <coughs> is an entrepreneurial institution, so it will discover whether it wor will work or not. Additionally, we have the line modeled by the French line of the retarded loans, retarded repayment loans for the digital transformation in the National uh, Domestic Economy Bank. Um, 1,000, uh, 150% ta tax break established right now for R&D for R &D spendings. Uh, and we know that the information about such things uh, get roots in the economy in two years, in three years. There's a huge re retarded uh, spread of the information. Uh, so we don't have the problem with the money. We have the problem with the coordination. Okay, and and I'm but I must admit when since I am more deeply involved talking to you and talking to some of the colleagues that I see a development in, in from my point of view and I see you getting more involved. I see some idea ideas taking up. I see really that that it moves and I think it's 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 on a good way. And whenever we can helpful, can be helpful, we w we would be. Well, we so. we my, my team believes this is much too slow, and we believe it's fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No. Now, I, would, I, I, I was thinking that uh, Fopke Klock, ITA director, and Patrick Kennedy of the European Factory of the Future Research Association would give their main statement on the European added value, but nevertheless, I would like to, to tell, if you want to briefly introduce you and have, if you have any comments on this financing of digital innovation hubs, you are very welcome to do so now. Popke. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> and thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and, and to hear uh, what is going on in the digital innovation hubs. I, I was yeah, very positive about what I heard about the success stories in concrete cases. Um, I'm, I'm not talking so much about finance because I'm not uh, specifically in the area of financing, specifically DIH. I'm in innovation finance a bit. Um, but I want, to, I want to address a different, uh, a different angle. Um, yes, um, I'm uh, director of the ITA office and ITA is a Eureka cluster um, in software innovation addressing the digital transition. Uh, you should not be confused by the word cluster. Cluster here means usually something regional. A Eureka cluster program is not regional. It's a public-private partnership between industry and national, uh, national governments. So n the, the, the funding for, uh, for example, ITA projects comes from national governments. Um, in that sense, uh, the Eureka clusters are complementary to, uh, for example, Horizon 2020 and, um, and, and, and XLGU, for example. Now, um, there is this, this funny moving picture on my slide. We are, we are, moving, we are, we are uh, spending a lot of energy in, uh, in recent years on the impact and the results of our projects. And then you do that, you see that the dynamics of, of business development and, and innovation uh, is a kind, of, uh, a, a kind of a chaotic dynamics. Um, if, you, um, if, you, if you look at the branch of mathematics in, in chaos theory, there are quite some similarities to how, how innovations and ideas propagate. Um, an idea begins somewhere, it is picked up elsewhere, um, and, and, and it is very hard to predict 
what in the end the results of an innovation uh, will be. We have very strong examples uh, in, 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 ITA, in the ITA <coughs> program on um, uh, 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 inventions made on one place, uh, spinning off a project in another place, in another region, in another area, in another application, uh, which has, which has uh, a big uh, uh, economic impact. An example of um, a co-simulation technology developed for trucks in Germany, ending up in windmills in Finland after a few years, and this may sound like an issue for big companies, but in reality, the advanced simulation tools are, are provided and developed by the SMEs that are part of these, these collaborative projects. Um, so, so this morning there was a lot of, and even now, there is a lot of discussion on how to link, uh, how to link uh, digital innovation hubs. Um, I think that um, uh, an, an, an instrument like ITEA could be one of the options to, to address this by linking together um, companies from different areas uh, and linking them with, with large companies because that's really a success pattern that small companies <coughs> need often a link to a big company to develop their business, to expand their business, to, create, to expand their horizon. And that is um, yeah, the message which I would like to bring across. Thanks, thanks, Fopke. That's in particular relevant for the Smart Anything Everywhere initiative because Smart Anything Everywhere is about cyber physical systems, about software, and that strongly overlaps with the focus of, of ITEA. So thank you. And, and uh, Patrick, maybe from the EFRA perspective, before coming later to the European added value, a short comment on uh, finances. Sure. Thank you very much. <coughs> it's a challenge to come after so many interesting points and also a hypnotic graphic. Uh, I don't know what that is, but I'd like one for, uh, <laughs> for another time. Um, so yes, very briefly, Factions of the Future, as you may know, is a 1 billion euro seven-year European Union program uh, that supports research innovation in manufacturing technologies, digitization, and all that, a full package. And that's uh, why we're here in a way, because I from S is part of that. Uh, but we'll come back to that in a moment, I'm sure. Uh, to answer the questions, uh, of which two. One thing I would say is that um, as an association and within the Factory of the Future, we've seen the growth of a very large community that has come out of the Factory of the Future activities. So lots of different types of members coming from across Europe. They in turn have taken back what is largely a positive experience to the national and regional level where they have talked to their national and regional authorities and talked about what their experience has been and what they need. Because Factory of the Future as a program is designed to be about industrial needs the priorities should be industrial friendly uh, and obviously relevant as a result. And therefore the regional or national priorities, be it an, an industry 4.0 strategy or otherwise, needs to be industry relevant. And that has in part been informed by a community, a fact of future community from across Europe. And that can then help in the connectivity between the different regions. But of course, regions are also sometimes competing in, uh, against each other, so we can't expect too much. On the finance side, uh, for us, the priority has been about when projects are coming to an end, sorry, I'm too close to the mic now, um, there is the issue of exploitation, uh, taking things further, and that finance obviously doesn't come through Fact of the Future, or not necessarily through the EU, but as Max pointed out, there are European funds for that. But how the question I would say, or the problem is, how those funds that, are met, that exist already are being administered to uh, companies at a local level because going to a bank as has already been pointed out is a challenge when you have a project result or you have an idea where you want to go further with a technology how then about because in some national cases it is actually your bank that is administrating some of the funding how are they doing it so to bring into our discussions maybe the people who have experience of finance but don't have experience of research innovation. So you have a community in place already through which there can be regional cooperation, a very large community, which is growing still as we see here today. But also on the other side, you need people who are involved in the finance side to come up to, st up to speed with and to understand what is involved and what we're talking about in order to make informed decisions when it comes to giving the loans, the money or the guarantees to finance the, uh, the activities we're talking about. That, that, was, that was an excellent hook leading to a, f a second round of short comments on financing, but I would like to stimulate that. First, you, you, you were mentioning that 
us technology, mostly technology oriented people, the ones who are the competent center part of the digital innovation hub and the equity funding, the loan, the organizations who manage loans, the EIB, the EIF, uh, they, <coughs> BPE, Kreditanstalt für Wiederaufbau and so on, they may not know the technology, you may not know the financing. We often see that then these large banks rather prefer to support an SME in buying a robot than in digital transformation or they rather prefer to give a big loan to a large company. And to that extent, I would like to ask uh, Simon Smith from PwC, you work in a, in a contract with my colleagues in, the, in, in DG Grow and DG, excuse me, DG FISMA. And uh, you are looking into that. Maybe you can give us a two minute inspiration on that before I ask all of you again, a short comment on what kind of financial instruments are missing. What should we think of? Is there anything missing? I heard from Jan, money is there, no problem. Luigi said the regions have to fund. And I would like to hear from all of you whether you have a view, but a very short view on that. So please. Thank you very much for Mr. Lemke to give me the word because it is exactly what you're talking about, which is w uh, wondering the EIB and the EIF the DG FISMA, DG Grow, DG Connect, all of them, they're wondering why there's so much request for money, but nobody goes to the funds which are available already. And they think the, uh, the hypothesis is, the problem is the advisory services, the innovation hubs, of course, or the EN. What is missing in their advisory package? Which would it make it possible to reach out to these SMEs and to articulate what these SMEs really want? because these instruments of EIB and EIF, they are existing, Jeremy, Jaspers, you don't know. Uh, but the problem is that even the SMEs don't always know because these uh, programs can enlarge, they can grow bigger because these are renting only capital markets. So the thing is what's missing in the advisory services to enable the advisory services which are already there to uh, lead SMEs to access to market, access to finance, access to skills, and access to legal. Thank you very much. Thanks, and, and, and I hope you can also work with us on the answer to that question. <laughs> so, volunteers first, Jan. Uh, I can speak for my context. So I said that the money is not a problem because there is seven years of abundance of money in the structural form, in the structural funds. But in the end, why Generally, the companies from the Central Europe don't apply for the European programs uh, because they must pay a consultant to apply. Uh, it takes a lot of money to apply because it's so complicated for them. And it's one thing. And from my government perspective, um, there is abundance of technology in the world. And we are discussing how to transfer it to the actors which my, whom I use it. Uh, productively and uh, we fear as a country that the Chinese industrial strategy or the American uh, digital industrial platform will gobble our uh, industrial future yeah, because we are lagging behind. So from our perspective the, the, the key is the combination of protecting global European companies which are our integrators of the value chain, they are key. If we lose them, no SMEs won't be, <laughs> you know, it, it won't be for, for anything because they are the global dinosaurs who are fed by the innovations of the smaller companies and their, you know, concurrent engineers and so on. So right now, from my perspective, as a kind of the public entrepreneur, uh, I'm, you know, sponsored by my prime, prime minister to be an entrepreneurial and what I have what I'm missing is the money for experimentation. I need the money who are, you know, like in Israel for the startups programs. I just need to experiment with one million euro. I just spend and discover in a disciplined experiment, like a lean startup model, that what kind of policy will give me a positive feedback. So I get, like, I, I, I take 10 million euro from the European Commission, for example, and I have 10 pilot projects, a, li a lighthouse projects, and I, you know, back to the commission say it worked. Let's discuss uh, a special line for financing in this concrete region or just to spread the gos uh, gospel for the different region with the structural, similar structural environment. That, that's my uh, 
plea for the European Union. Okay, so I, I think that's a very valuable comment. I see some of this happening in what, what my colleagues in GG Grow are developing, starting with the Vanguard Initiative, who was centered around certain technologies and brought regions with similar ideas together. And that was a bit going in that direction. But uh, you are right in that sense. There was no money provided for the final step, namely for the real experimentation. It was more for seeing what has to be done, for matching the region, but then for the final step and doing the experimentation, there was no money. So I think we, we, we very well take that point. Sam, Sam. From, the, from the Dutch side and then yeah. Martin from the German side. And yeah, thanks, Max. So I, I'd like to respond to uh, Miss from uh, Pricewaters Coopers. So um, I agree with my Polish colleague uh, that literally the transaction cost for a typical company to go to a, a Euro European Investment Bank initiative is, is quite high. You need to know your way around already. Um, so I, I would propose, um, first, I don't know how this would work in practice, but I used to work at a regional development agency. There my job was to build innovative startup companies in a tech atmosphere. At the same time, I had uh, uh, colleagues of mine who were in the investment bank of that province. Uh, typically, I would go with a company to them, of which I was very enthusiastic. And then uh, nine out of 10 times, the loan they would request would fail because there was no solid business case yet in terms of financing. In my opinion, in terms of innovation value, there was a very strong business case. So my plea here would be to <coughs> somehow bridge this world of um, technology innovators and uh, uh, investors with either money for both of them to get to know each other or um, more, uh, I would say, risk-taking money in, uh, at the side of the investment bank. I don't see them taking a lot of risks when it comes to production development financing. Yeah, I think that is what we often hear as well when, when, when SMEs want to get money for software. So the risk, they consider the risk much higher than buying something physical like, like a robot. And there pr probably there is the, what you said, there is advice needed for them that this may be as beneficial for them as, and, and with less risk or with the same level of risk than, than, than other investments. Thanks. Martin. Yeah, I um, um, fully agree. Uh, so uh, we have spent a lot of European money on innovation, very high-flying things. And what we really have to do is go into the low-flying, transfer into reality. Um, I've worked some time in industry, and I know that the, the, uh, the border to go to for projects, national or international uh, European projects, is relatively high. It seems uh, that's a uh, high overhead for, for getting the money. We have to simplify that by using very simple approaches and uh, yeah, by, by being able to, to finance also risky things. Uh, and uh, what I would also like, especially on the European level, is going into platform-like things. Yeah, we have international, we have Facebook, we have Google, large platforms. And when we uh, distribute the money to too many small initiatives, and we have no outcome. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, islands in, in, the, in Europe, but uh, none of that is, is self-sustainable. Yeah, so we have to take um, yeah, the innovations we have, bring them together, um, bring them to small companies and try to use the synergies. Yeah, especially in fields like simulation software. There are a lot of small companies in Spain and France and other uh, smaller European com companies, speaking from the German perspective especially. Yeah? And how can we join them together to a large ecosystems uh, like we did with, with CloudFlow? That's a good, good approach. Yeah? Using uh, software, bring them to a big platform. That's a, it's a European platform. And I think uh, that would be very well spent money. So there, there you are referring to the CloudFlow, Cloud SME Fortissimo, marketplaces or platforms which you think are, are valuable. Yeah, we, we're taking part in that project. That I think it's a very good approach. We have to really bring that forward and that companies know that it's there and that they can use it. And yeah. not only use it in, in five experiments, but really bring them to the broad public. Yeah. And, and we are, as when I pick up the word platform, digital industrial platforms, we have picked that up and over the last year we have developed a concept of platforms for the health sector, smart health, platforms for, the for smart manufacturing, platforms for smart farming, 
And we are, we are now in this, in, in 18 to 20, put, we are putting 300 million euros for this platform building, but we do it in big chunks. We want, we want that to be 300 million in 15 projects or so, so where we have many participants so that they gather around one platform in order to make sure that the digital industrial platforms of the future are defined by the European communities who are involved in that and are not in, are not given as they are by some of the big actors who may not represent properly our interests. So that's yeah. the idea behind it. It's open to everybody, also the big actors, but it is for everybody to have access in a fair way to the market. Yeah. If we, we see it in the uh, IIoT platforms currently from all the big uh, automation companies. Yeah, Everybody's trying it, but there will only very few survive. Yeah, and uh, we should do the right thing and go in, into fewer platforms from the very beginning, not wasting uh, public money. Yeah, fewer, fewer. We do that in a sense that we say instead of a three to five million euro project, we want a 20 million project and we want that you bring the different ecosystems of the different member states and the different group of actors together in different phases. Yeah, definitely do the Thanks. right approach. Didier, your comment on the financing, what do we need? What is missing? I think you, you in France are very strong on, on the loan and equity funding, as far as I understand, for your program. So where do you see what we need in addition? Uh, I think I will receive a lot of uh, emails from my colleagues, but I think we, we the money is not the question today. I think we have to use uh, in the right way the, the money we have. So to avoid duplication, we need to implement a, a better coordination between regional, national, and European level. This is for me missing because uh, we waste a lot of time at the different uh, steps and we repeat, uh, we don't share the right knowledge and so on. So, uh, so not mandatory way of money. We have to think also about something I missed at the first question. Uh, the actors we have uh, in terms of innovation hubs, uh, they have different profiles. When I said uh, we have uh, to establish a win-win situation for each of them, we have uh, competitiveness clusters. Uh, so they provide services uh, to their ecosystem, it's important. We have RTOs, for sure, so they do uh, a lot of things. Uh, infrastructure and services, like business uh, development and so on. And we have also some uh, uh, small PPPs, uh, groupement uh, inter-entreprises, uh, that are funded uh, by, by regions. So they have different, I would say, behavior, and their business model is not the same. So in addition to what is missing, we have to think about their, their, their needs, specifically their needs. Their needs. So organization, uh, consistency of the different layers. We are developing the FP9 position for, for France today, and this is something we will put. And in addition, what is missing for me is the uh, ability to deal with uh, disruptive innovation. Disruptive innovation. Because if we wait for five uh, years uh, to have something on the market. Uh, okay, innovation, how we do it and bring our shop in order in terms of the instruments, all the instruments, the financial instruments that we have and pool it in the right way. Fernando, you have the last word on this issue, unless my colleagues here from EFRA or from UTEA would comment on that question, otherwise we go to the next. I would like to have two quick rounds on some other things. Well, I completely agree with uh, my French colleague. I think if, I, if you ask me uh, what it lacks is uh, actually uh, coordination. I think we, we do have uh, different, uh, different programs and, and different uh, funds to, to help uh, digital innovation hubs, but um, uh, we, we really need more coordination among the actors because we are talking uh, about structural funds, we're talking about regional funds, we're talking about national funds, we're talking about what are actually, the, uh, what is going to be actually the nature of these digital innovation hubs, because uh, depending on this nature, they can really uh, uh, well, uh, provide services in return of a payment from, from SMEs, uh, developing an, uh, a sustainable, uh, uh, financial scheme. Also, if we want to to go from innovation to towards uh, uh, real implementation, I don't know if we could give it a thought of including um, Industry 4.0 in the general regime of exemptions, uh, because we are talking about okay, we we need to transcend this uh, this whole uh, innovation uh, uh, scheme. So why don't we really talk about uh, 
4.0 inside uh, the European uh, uh, general regime of exemptions. Yeah, thank you very much for that proposal. Now, what I would like to do is I would go away from the financing discussion. I think that was very good to hear your, 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 your statements, to get your ideas. We will, they will flow, we took notes of those, but they will flow into, into our discussion and I think we will have more discussions on this framework program nine is still a way to go. But nevertheless, we'll have more discussions maybe next time around Hanover Fair, we have something like that in mind. And I would like to just now go into the question, European added value, I4MS, SAE are European initiatives. And I would like to have quick statements, short statements on is Europe putting the right added value? If yes, you can bless us. If no, you can tell us where, what we should not do or where we interfere. And I would li like to ask first Patrick from EFRA, from the Factories of the Future Research Association. You are, in terms of I4MS, this is part of the PPP, what we do in I4MS. So maybe you could have an initiative, but I would invite two or three uh, statements from the audience if you want, so you could prepare for short statements. But short statements is one minute, and if you talk longer than minute, one minute, I'd stop you. So please, one minute interventions from the audience. And I'll, I'm tough on that, yeah, I'm known for that. Please. Uh, you are, so I'll be careful. You have, you have, you have, you have, you have a bit more. Um, I would say that the IFRMS uh, within FAF has, uh, Fact of the Future has been a, a real success and it's a demonstration of the added value as, as a very quick answer. Um, and uh, the thing, the, the point is of, of this is that when we say added value and we understand, uh, we have our own understandings of what that means, what, what these benefits are. Uh, within IFRMS it was the way the projects were structured. So having those, if you like, those mini calls in the projects made them accessible. And so those companies that took part in the experimentation calls saw the value of being participating in that through the experience they had there. And that experience of in being involved in European projects is clearly very important. But uh, there obviously are challenges. I mean, if companies are spending money from Poland or elsewhere on consultancies uh, to get into a European project, then obviously there's a problem there. Um, and they're not seeing the added value if, if they see that they have to go down a certain route and spend a certain amount of money and that seems too onerous, they're not getting involved. So we have to make it even more attractive than we've already done. Okay, so thanks Patrick for this, I would say relatively positive comment, thank you very much. And I would like first, before we go to the audience, ask the member states representatives if they have a feeling for this Europe should not do, this Europe should be doing. So who wants to be first? All right, you're not answer uh, no one. But, uh, <laughs> no, Didier, it's your term. I, yes, I always. Uh, so the answer, the answer is yes. Uh, uh, when we discuss with uh, the SMEs, uh, they are really happy. They get really a better knowledge uh, from the, the European collaboration. There is an added value, but they are, they are few. So the question is how can we link uh, I4MS, for example, with topics when we discuss uh, about uh, B2B? There is a topic, uh, NMBP20, if I am right, uh, that is speaking about uh, B2B marketplace. So we have to think how ca we can reuse, share the knowledge, okay? not only a library without any description, but really a knowledge about the product we have developed and people can access from um, everywhere uh, about the, the content and find the so a marketplace. I think we have to increase the links. So, so, so I think that's a very good comment in a bit reinforcing what we, what we have indicated a little bit. With research and innovation money, like we use it in I4MS, we can do one experiment on of a kind with one SME involved. Now, how do we get that brought to the other, other SMEs? And how would you eventually get even investment funding to support such further, I would say, best practice experiments? We have, we have done the first experiment. We have seen it works. Others would do similar things, not direct competitors even, but in similar areas, how do we get that finance? How do we get the knowledge to them that this is happening? Okay, thank you. Who wants next? Fopke, yes, yeah. please. Yes, I, I, my, my point would be that um, Europe should not overlook the big companies. We have had the joint undertaking, we have, we have Excel now, we had Artemisia, we have had good cooperations with them, we still have. Um, 
I think that, uh, that, that the spirit is sometimes that, that everyone focuses on SMEs, that's good, because SMEs care for growth, but in many cases we see in our project that the SMEs need the big companies to expand. And, and there may be a danger that if, if big companies are too much under pressure, that the SMEs have less uh, uh, leverage to, to expand. This is, this is a feeling which I sense a lot in, in our environment. I, I, I agree with that feeling. I think, uh, so message here for the ones who write the notes, message here is also we do not only need to talk to the SMEs, but we need the big ones involved as well, because the big ones are leading leading the way and we need to be this ecosystem of all of them. Who wants to be next? Martin and then Jan. Yeah, I think uh, what I just said uh, it's to the same uh, as we heard here. Um, but um, one thing um, is really the international transfer. That is, is, is the main benefit Europe can, can, can give there. Um, and perhaps when, when you uh, take the blueprint of our Mittelstand 4.0 in Germany, uh, where the public funding from the fa uh, federal government uh, helps regions which are not able on their own, I think it's a similar thing Europe can do really to help regions which are not able to do it on their own to, to start uh, such a regional funding uh, um, also than with, with European money and to spread everything uh, everywhere and to reuse best practices. So not starting all the time and inventing everything from the procedures, how to do it uh, anew, but uh, taking blueprints from existing installations and just installing them everywhere in Europe. But that would very much support the efforts we have started with widening, reaching out, for example, to Eastern Europe, what, what PricewaterhouseCoopers is doing for us, for the parliament, in uh, advising potential new hubs and how they can link to us. Yeah, so, I so we see we're on the right way, partially. Yeah. But we are not far there. We have to go much further. I, I agree. Jan, please. Once again, from my particular perspective, um, I just discovered that we have quite a big digital innovation hub in, in Warsaw. It employs 2,000 people. Uh, it develops the product called Predix, but it's completely devoted to General Electric. Um, this is a fairly closed company. And all these competences can be used uh, outside of this partnership, sometimes because there's a you know, contract, but still this is a public research institute. So what is lacking here is a um, money to rebuild the business model of these institutes because they're fairly focused on the technology and the partners who are advanced. Uh, and sometimes it is not enough to have the technology you have to convince and have a pro program of evangelization, of technological evangelization, visit the company uh, to bring them the marketing of the basic technology in order to, to understand the, um, the next grades of transformation. And the transformation as business is not absorption of technology, but also the, 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 the with the technology roadmap comes the uh, skills roadmap. So uh, the cohesion policy should also be at the same time digital skills policy. And we have the notion of the skills voucher which we give to the entrepreneurs and make them um, this is a proposal of course right now and make them to choose uh, the, the several centers of excellence and when when they can upgrade the, their technological competences mainly by the proper consulting but this process uh, in the central europe must be facilitated because the both sides of this process are underfunded and under under skills, I would say. So, so there should be also the transfer of the skills, how to transfer the knowledge um, from the Western Europe and the you know excellent European Eastern Western European institutions to the eastern part of the Europe, with the mutual benefit because a lot of bright people and talents is wasting in the Western in the Eastern Europe, and they can you know start a startup and provide a solution for the global European company. Okay, thank you very much. I'll, I'll pick up the skills in my final round of, of, of comments that you can make. Before that, uh, Luigi, then Sam, and, and Fernando as the host has the last before the, before the audience. <laughs> Luigi. Um, what do you why do you think the hubs are, are such a bright idea? 
is because they are filling a gap that has been there for a long time uh, between the organization that are um, experienced in research and innovation and, and the companies. Um, there is a lot of uh, know-how and we see it, we hear it around the table, we hear it during the meetings uh, also about uh, I4MS, about research and innovation and, and how, and, and the companies that participate to your project has been said is, is, is a small number, are the best, the excellence that can manage to do that. The hubs, the way that at least we are building them uh, in, in Italy, but I've seen also the others of I4MS are doing, they are very rooted within the territories and they know every single SME of their territory. What are their needs, how they operate, and they know how to talk to the entrepreneur that has to make the investment decision. So if we want the hub to be a one-stop shop, I think that the Commission has to make an effort to give a one-stop information point in which we collect whatever is there that can be useful for the hubs to do their, to, 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 to succeed in their mission. Best practices in financing, best practices in policies, best practices in application, how an SME can spend 100,000 or, or 50,000 in an effective way and which the results are. I think there is a lot of this knowledge. I think that we need a place where this can be collected and be used by the different hubs um, also promoting collaboration between So them. That, that supports very much the initial, what we have on the catalog of competences. The catalog of competences, that means the, catalog, the competence of the hubs, must be extended to include the best practices so we all over Europe have that access to the best practices. So that is the next generation. I'm looking at, at, at the colleague from JRC here, <laughs> <laughs> just so that this, that this comment is not forgotten. Sam. Thanks, Max. So um, I'm also very happy with the I4MS program as it, as it is. I'd like to see that continued. What for me would be an addition um, from, the, from the Commission towards also national governments is that you talked about how you want to get one euro from a national government, one euro from a regional government, one euro from EU and, and getting a uh, leverage. Um, I don't know the situation in other countries. In the Netherlands, we have a national government which is very slow in investing in this topic. We have regional governments which are active, and we have EU which is very active. Um, to me, the timing of getting all that government money in the basket at the same time, that is not happening now, at least not in the Netherlands. So I would greatly value initiatives on the EU side to get dialogue between EU and national governments and regional governments to put that money in all at the same time. And I don't know if that's a job of the Commission, but I would certainly welcome it. I, I think I would retire before that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just joking. I, I, I fully understand your, 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 your comment, but I already know how difficult it is to align two calls. Yeah? And aligning that with member states. We have always said digital innovation hubs, we have variable geometries. We don't dare to define exactly what a hub is because they are <coughs> slightly different by member state and we, we don't want to be religious about that. We just want to add that value, but I don't think we will ever be able to synchronize uh, okay, all that. But, but uh, I agree, yeah, so it, it, it's, a, it's a tough job. But uh, one way of getting further in that difficult situation could be that one of those actors, being it commission or being it national, being it regional, could say, I would uh, be the first one to step in, I would put forward my money, and then I would um, take the risk of the other money jo okay. being joined. And I don't see any of those three actors making that move. Yes, we have, we have, we have in some way on the European side tried to do that. In the last call we have said, has to be linked to regional activities. In this call that comes in 2019 and 20, we have said must be strongly and proven rooted in national and regional ecosystems. So in this one, we expect that, is, that this is already the case. That, but that is as far as we can go formally at the moment. Fernando. Following uh, what Luigi said, um, and if you, if, if I uh, have to give you an, a recommendation, and I would never do that, I have to say that uh, probably uh, you have to enhance all the efforts to f successfully fulfill what you've start, uh, I think, at the beginning of the year, the EU uh, platform of national initiative. 
I think that for us is uh, a key element if we want to success uh, in these digital innovation hubs uh, program. I'm, um, you, you do have a great responsibility in the Commission, uh, giving us the chance, all the member states here and everyone, to share best practices, to know what are they doing, to, to get the chance to know how they're managing their finance, uh, how they're managing their talent, their skills. So I would say that you, for us, really, you, you do have a, a key part in this process. Okay, thank you very much. That's also encouraging for us because the next meeting of the platform is on the 21st of November and, and I know you are invited for that. So, from the audience, uh, three comments from the audience. Sylvia, can you help with the microphones or somebody here help with the microphones? Yes, ladies first. One minute statements, yeah? You, you are aware of that. Also less, I mean, <coughs> Giuseppe Padula from University of Bologna. I mean, uh, from my experience from some years in uh, working with uh, digital innovation and transformation in the companies, I see that uh, mm, it's not a question being uh, in agreement with uh, what has been told from the, the, the um, representative of the Polish government. The companies has money if they want. Uh, the problem is that companies, my impression, has not found that uh, digital transformation is str a, a strategic key for the competition. So they know that uh, they can do, I mean, uh, new, new products, digital uh, products, but they are still working with the strategical keys of Industry 3.0, just to say. So they, in the, um, in the exhibition, in uh, sectorial exhibitions, they still are uh, competing with the old, with the old, uh, um, let's say, leverage, l um, tools. At the, at the moment, they know that it's possible to do the digital transformation in some products, but still they're not convinced that that's strategic key. So this is why followers are faster in taking digital innovation than the leaders of the sector. Thank you very much. Before I now go to, to, to two or three more, I would like to just ask you, as a final statement, we had also skills on the agenda. We haven't discussed that. Maybe, maybe you can make one sentence, 20 seconds maximum, because I know Germans can make sentences that are three pages. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would like to ask you for these 20 seconds, just one statement on how you think we can improve developing and further developing upskilling in, in the digital innovation hub initiatives like I4MS. Just one statement to get some ideas and then we discuss it next time. Next audience. Uh, Greg, I mean, you go here. <laughs> from a CEA in, uh, in Paris and from the uh, digital, uh, digital Innovation Hub. I'd firstly like to say that I perceived all the work that you're doing at the Commission very positively. And I think that it's having a transformative effort today already on national initiatives and on regional initiatives. And from the point of view as a, of an RTO making us evolve as well. I think that uh, the emphasis that you're putting on building a network is very important and it should be boosted because when we want to create entrepreneurship, new skills, so on and so forth, it is at the interface between these digital platforms, digital innovation hubs, and industry, and new technologies. And we need a European market for that. And finally, big fish, little fish, that should be done a bit more at European level. We have some successful cases in France where you use the big fish to pull the SMEs and then they stay because the SMEs that they've pulled are better off. Thank you very much. Thanks. Please. Thank you. In addition to my previous comment, I uh, suggest that uh, you look at successful innovation schemes in the world and see if you get some lessons. For example, <coughs> top-down uh, innovation usually don't, does not work. Uh, where, uh, let's say, the government decides on uh, innovation. Bottom-up uh, innovation is usually working fine. If you have limited resources, like the European Union, uh, you, you, don't can gener you cannot generate a METI uh, system like uh, the Japanese system. So you have to make sure uh, these uh, initial impulses the, uh, are a kick and uh, they are generating an innovative environment. So that it's like uh, not giving fish to people, but giving them an angle 
how to fish and tell them how to fish. So, because they have to sustain innovative. It's not just a single consulting. So that's, I guess, the, the, the instrument needs to take care of this. Thank okay. you. Th th thank you very much. That's uh, much in line what we try to do by giving money to others to, 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 to innovate and not do it directly with the Commission. I think we could not handle that well. But I know your comment went a bit further than that. One more? Yes, last comment. Hello. It's about connection. I say I, I think that uh, the uh, the name of the program from Spain is quite well uh, indicated. The connected industry and connection is one of the perspective very important for uh, for the Internet of Things. But we cannot go to me and say you have to be connected if we are not connected. So it's mandatory that we form a network. And I would propose something like Internet of Digital Information Hub. IOD <laughs> <laughs> is a new <laughs> deal that we have to afford. Thank you very much for the proposal of the Internet of Digital Innovation Hubs. Closing statement on how to improve skills so that skills don't, be don't become the bottleneck. Can digital innovation hubs do something? We go again right to left. Jan, 20 seconds. Oh, it's not enough. <laughs> 20 minutes. <coughs> No, uh, just to stimulate, not yeah, to discuss. But the challenge is that the, uh, the fastest and the biggest enterprise at the same time in the world, that means these five giants from the United States, they learn employing young people. Yeah, they employing young people, put them in two weeks or two months camps, and then put them into apprenticeships in which they are learn, learning with their partners who are older and both sides are learning. And this is the main challenge for the institutional system of education in Europe because that's how the, the knowledge will spread in Europe. It's, of course, it's a national matter, not the European Commission one, but sponsoring the, the environments in which the kind, the, this very kind of learning can Take place. Uh, emerge when the engineers become the you know encounter the software engineers and so on but also uh, managing this process this is the key how to to manage this process not okay. skills of being engineers but managing this this mixture thanks this sorry for stopping you patrick uh, again very quickly then um, it's involving the the important actors the industrial actors of different sizes and different scales exactly building on what you just said uh, from the, from the student engineering part, the uh, making engineering or the other now multi-skilled areas attractive and interesting to get involved in, but also then looking in the long term because obviously reskilling, upskilling, continuous skill, education acquisition is clearly very important. And the actors, the industry actors, the users of this need to be involved in that. Thank you, Luigi. Yes, they can. I mean, they, they should. Um, we, we um, in, in Italy, it, it already works because the the associations already have been involved in training of industry for quite a while, so HUB are picking up on that. Um, with, the, with the universities they're working with, they, they get a lot of help. One they mentioned I would like to stress is also the skilling of the hubs. I think that uh, the exercise that you have done with I4MS has been excellent of the, of the training of this first uh, bunch of hubs. I think this, uh, somehow the platform or whatever will be, there should also be a tool to upscale, uh, maintain a, 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 a skilling of effort hubs. of hubs. Popke. Five seconds. Put human capital results and impact at the same level or at a similar level as business impact. Thank you. Sam. Yeah, so we, we saw that the second uh, industrial revolution took about uh, 50 or 60 years. Uh, people had time to adopt. The third was about uh, one generation, I think, and now we're in the fourth. And you see technology changing within a generation so rapidly that you can only do continuous lifelong learning. So you need uh, learning institutions like um, applied uh, sciences, but also universities to come to the companies to do lifelong learning. Thank you. Martin. We need a different thinking. Uh, we have to think from the customer, not from technology side. And that means, especially for the hubs, we have less the researcher than more the consultant approach. So especially the hubs uh, located at universities, they need different staff to do the transfer into the uh, uh, industry. So have the right staff to be able to know what the SMEs know and how to bring it together. Didier. 
In the survey we have in France, the service dedicated to education and training is mandatory to be a hub. Okay. Fernando, now it's the final, final <laughs> statement of the what panel. I say, what I would say is that uh, whatever we do in coordination, we have to do it thinking in a very long term. Okay. So this was inspiring on skills. I think we have to also look now into what the Europe, Europe can do, how Europe can lead the way, because as you know, education is not a European affair. It's, the, uh, it's for the member states or in my home country for the regions. And so we have to see what Europe, what Europe role can play, or what Europe can play in that. And we are definitely thinking of that and we will in have this discussion again a bit more deeper. Thank you very much to my panel here. Thanks for the audience for staying with us.